Good morning. Welcome back to Wild Woman Pantry. I'm Alex and this is my garden and it is the end of July 2021. It's our sixth garden tour of the season and I have to say this is to me this is the most exciting garden tour yet. Um, there's this the space is transformed and there's so many things that are um, blooming and so much fruit that is hanging um, on the vines, on the trellises. Um, yeah, it's, uh, there's a lot of abundance in the garden right now and I can't wait to show it to you. So this trellis behind me is covered in purple green beans on this half and cow peas on this half. And as you can see, it's absolutely covered. Um, I don't know if you can see, but up at the top here, um, the crepe myrtle, we have these huge old crepe myrtle trees that were planted, you know, probably 50 years ago. Um, but they're just the biggest crepe myrtle trees I've ever seen. And they are leaning down to touch the top of the trellis. They're just really heavy with blooms and it's been raining a lot. So the limbs have been sagging down and touching the top of the trellis. So the green beans have decided to grow up the crepe myrtle tree. Um, now I might get out here with a ladder at some point and um, I don't know, maybe trim that branch and lay it over the top of the trellis because I don't want green beans growing up into the trees. Um, because while it might look cool, you have to keep green beans uh, harvested. You have to really harvest them before they get too big and, and keep them harvested or the production will slow down. Uh, the more you harvest, the more production you'll have and it's going to be a pain. Uh, I don't even think if we got a ladder out here, I mean if we got a big enough ladder, but we just have like a medium sized like step ladder and I don't know that I would be able to pick all the green beans out of this top of the tree. So I'm gonna have to address that. It's really shaded in here. This is one of my favorite places to be. Uh, during the heat of the day, I'll come out and just do a garden walk. And this shade underneath these bean plants is much appreciated and enjoyed by me. Um, the green beans are, are blooming now. There's, there's a little green bean blossom right there. Um, yeah. Um, I don't see any small beans yet. I really just see the blooms. <clears throat> but I'm really excited to start seeing these purple green beans. And the cool thing is, you know, this is such a mess. The green beans that are gonna grow here, they're gonna be purple green beans. So they're gonna be really easy to spot in all of this mess and to harvest those. The green beans are over here. The cow peas are over here. And this is a very different looking plant that I didn't actually think was going to, I thought it was gonna climb and then I didn't think it was gonna climb. And then it climbed and it's still climbing. Um, and it's, this one does have, these are California black eyed peas, cow peas. They're, um, they're called cow peas, but they're black eyed peas. Um, and yeah, they've bloomed and they've made these little, these little guys. Um, I thought there were more. Yeah, there's more down here. And they've, they've got to get a lot bigger and fill out. Like the peas on the inside have to get bigger. But yeah, I've got a lot of these, which I'm really excited about. You can see the, the little flower. I've not seen one open. It's a really pretty little flower. There's one that's closed and you can see that off and there's the little green the little bean or pea the pod yeah so that is those are my beans on the other side of this trellis I've got ground cherries and basil and I'm really excited because the ground cherries have started making fruit that is a ground cherry so it's like a tomatillo that comes in this little husk here. Like there's a round fruit inside of this little husk. Um, 
some more and you know they're ready when they I think the husk turns yellow maybe and it falls to the ground that's why they're called ground cherries um, when it falls to the ground it's ready to eat and it's a very sweet fruit you can make jams and pies out of it's my first time growing it and it took a long time to germinate it took about a month for the seeds to germinate I didn't think they were going to but ever since then it's been a really low maintenance plant that basil is looking lovely I love to come out here and harvest fresh basil to put on uh, tomato sandwiches here are all those peppers and eggplants that I planted um, over a month ago. I have a video uh, showing planting all of the peppers and eggplants. Um, some of my, I lost some jalapeno plants. Um, this one's just really little to bunny rabbits, but the others are doing okay. This one's blossoming. I've been picking the blossoms off to let the plants get bigger before they started making fruit because once they start making fruit that will slow down the growth of the plant and I really wanted big beautiful plants um, but I'm, I'm happy with their size now um, I would say the biggest ones are about two feet tall and maybe a foot and a half um, so I'm letting them flower and also it's late in the season so I figured I'd better go ahead and start letting these guys make fruit for me The eggplants are looking good. They have this um, flea beetle damage, these tiny little black. Let's see, yeah, you can see some of the flea beetles. There's one right there. Um, but yeah, so they've got some damage. But my plants last year had a lot of flea beetle damage and they were fine. They, um, they produced a lot for me. And these are uh, bell peppers that are also starting to bloom. Those are some banana peppers that really got chewed by the bunnies, so I don't know how well they're gonna do. The corn looks great. Um, so here in the south, um, in Alabama, where I'm at, we've had torrential rain. We have had, you know, there were several times in the past couple of weeks where I would look at the 10-day forecast and it would show rain forecasted for every day. Um, now it didn't end up raining every single day, but it it was really close. Um, and this land is on a slope here. It slopes this way and it slopes that way. And when it rains a lot, it just look at all these weeds. It just looks like a you know a river flooding down through here. And it had knocked over a lot of the corn. So what I did is I went and I got, um, at Walmart, I got these little tea posts. They're very short. They're like, I think they were maybe like three foot tea posts and this wire. Um, I don't know. It's a, it's a pretty sturdy little wire. And I basically, um, made a frame, wrapped the wire all the way around. And that is, uh, propping up the corn. Um, but then what I also did because some a lot of it in the middle was still leaning over I got the wood chip mulch and I mulched uh, really thickly around each Corn stalk and kind of used the mulch to prop them up and they haven't fallen over since then and that's been Maybe two weeks ago that I did that. So yeah, um, if your corn falls over don't stress you can always prop it up Let's see, over here are the brassicas, and if you remember in my last garden tours, these brassicas were really struggling. They all looked like this. Um, they had a lot of caterpillar damage, and this is, this is red ragged jack kale. Um, there's one scarlet kale back there, um, but as you can see, they're all looking much better because I have sprayed, I sprayed BT the day before yesterday, and then I sprayed it like maybe a week or more before that. They're all wet right now, but um, they're wet from the dew. But as you can see, BT works. If you've got stuff that's getting really bad caterpillar damage, just spray some BT and it, it doesn't, it's organic. It doesn't kill everything. It doesn't hurt pollinators. 
all it does is kill the um, all it does is kill the caterpillars and little like worms that that eat your foliage. They have to ingest the Bt in order to be affected. Right here on this trellis, lima beans. Now this, the lima beans are covered in, they're covered in these uh, fruit cluster sets where you've got the blossoms and the ones that have already turned into little beans and they're just covered. So they look very prolific. Down here on this trellis, this half is um, Charente melon. Um, it's like a cantaloupe type melon, a uh, French heirloom that I'm really excited about. And it's covered in blossoms, but no, um, no fruit yet. But I'm just, I'm just thrilled that it's doing okay. This, this little guy looks unfortunate. I don't know what the problem is. I don't know if it's um, vine borers or squash bugs. I have both. These are, these are silver slicer cucumbers, which are doing pretty well. They're, they're climbing and spreading out. There's one, there's one that looks ready to harvest soon. Um, these silver slicers, it's my first time growing them and they're delicious. They, they have this light thin, this thin light green skin. Um, it's not very thick at all. And my daughter and I come out here and just munch on the silver slicers right off the vine. They're delicious. I use these two saw horses and this bird netting to create a cage to protect my okra. I had this be this bed planted full of okra and uh, rabbits and chipmunks were just chewing it down to stubs. And so I pulled all of those out. They weren't doing well at all. And I replanted some okra. I've got two types. I've got a jing orange okra and then a uh, regular green clumps and spineless okra. And I really like, I really like this cage setup. Um, I just used what I had. I was like, I have these, I have this net. I'm just gonna try and keep the critters out so that I can get some okra. And once the plants get, um, you know, over a foot tall, then I will probably take this off. Um, because by that point, they'll be too tall and thick for the rabbits to chew. My tomatoes are looking amazing. This one is my tallest plant and it's now officially taller than me. See, I've got, I've got some aphids. I've got some aphids on there. Um, the aphids aren't too bad yet a sucker. Pull that sucker off real quick. The aphids aren't too bad yet. Right now I can still come through and just brush them off, squish them a little bit. Um, but if they get too bad I'll spray some neem oil which is another organic um, pest control substance. Um, Look at this cluster. That is a huge, crazy cluster. I'm not sure exactly what type this is. It could be a black cherry. That might be what it is, or regular cherry, but it could be a black cherry. Look, this one's starting to blush. That's so exciting. Um, that's the first one that's it's starting to blush and starting to ripen. But yeah, you can just see how much fruit I've got out here, I've got seven, seven different varieties of tomatoes this year. Oh no. And like I told you, we got all this rain and 
the rain is still coming. Um, they really almost don't have a chance to dry out before we get more rain. And I'm getting disease. When, when the conditions are just really humid, really wet, um, that's how disease spreads uh, from the soil to your tomato plants. And so, yikes. Yikes. What, I'm, what I do when I see this is I just go ahead and I remove, if not the whole branch, I remove um, like a good bit of the branch and get rid of that. So far, the diseased leaves I've seen have been on the bottom, but now we've got diseased leaves up at the top. And that's disappointing, but with tomatoes in Alabama, you're really not going to avoid disease altogether. And unfortunately, it's just been one of those years where the rain, um, I didn't, you know, I, last year I got really beaten up when my plants got diseases and started to suffer. But this year I understand that I'm doing everything that I possibly can to avoid the disease and it's just the weather. There's nothing I can do about it and there's always next year. And obviously, even if these plants all get diseases, I'm still going to get, wow, I'm still gonna get a huge harvest. Look how big this tomato is. It's so big. I'm so excited. Yeah, it's gonna be a surprise. I don't know exactly what these are. I won't know until they ripen. <laughs> I do know what some of them are. These are, these are blue cream berries. They'll be a cream yellow tomato with blue shoulders. And I can tell that's what they are because you can see the, the blue shoulders. And the stem has a bluer tinge than other tomato stems. And these are black beauties. These are a full size uh, slicer tomato that wherever the sun touches, they get really purple black. Um, so when it's ripe, it should be pretty much entirely purple black. It might have some red spots on it. So overall, I am thrilled with my tomatoes this year. Um, I tried something new, which was um, using the stakes and pruning them to a single stem um, and really heavily pruning the bottoms of the plants for improved airflow. And I really enjoyed it. I'm really happy about my tomatoes. Um, hope they can stick it out and survive the disease a little bit longer. So over here, this is one lone sweet potato plant, and the leaves keep getting eaten off. Um, I need to put a net over it to really protect it from the bunnies and the chipmunks. Um, and I've got more sweet potato slips to fill this bed in. I need to go ahead and do that soon. Um, this was my potato patch. Yesterday, I pulled up three potato plants that were right here and it was my first time growing potatoes and I used store-bought grocery organic uh, potatoes from the grocery store to sprout and to um, plant my potatoes and I was so tickled like disappointed um, but really more tickled and amused when I pulled up these three plants I got one potato per plant and I thought that was ridiculous um, <laughs> But I'm, I'm going to pull up the rest of these really soon. As you can see, they're starting to look kind of diseased. Um, and yeah, I'm, so let me know if I was thinking about making a video showing how I'm going to pull up and harvest these potato plants and see what's under there. Uh, let me know in the comments if you would like to see a video about harvesting potatoes. This trellis is like alive. <laughs> um, this has my two, uh, actually, I've got two plants right here, one plant there, one here, one here, so five. Kukutsa uh, gourd plants. Um, so it's technically a gourd that grows really big and long. Like it would almost touch the ground, like fully grown but if you pick it when it is young and tender it's like zucchini 
It's uh, an Italian heirloom that I've never grown before, but look how long it is. I mean, just look. You can see how long this thing is. Um, and it's still really skinny right now, but once it gets a little wider, I will be harvesting it. And you use it just like zucchini. And it's, yeah, it's an Italian heirloom. And really in Italy, they did not have um, any recipe that calls for zucchini. It originally used kakutsa. Um, so I've read. And um, apparently my Italian great-grandfather used to grow this um, in his garden and my mom has memories of that so I'm really excited to grow kakutsa this year. I have a lot of squash bugs. These are these are squash bugs right here. See these guys? Um, they're mating right now um, but they look like they look like stink bugs but they're more of a elongated shape um, and they're different from squash vine borers they are called squash bugs and they basically like suck like the life out of your plants um, so what I've been doing is coming out here with a container of soapy water just a drop of dish soap and some water and I get gloves on and I just come out here and I just knock them off into the container. I hold the container underneath and that they sink to the bottom and I, I pulled about 30, 30 or more squash bugs off of these plants the other day and I need to come out here and do it again. Um, because obviously the plants, uh, the vines are doing great, but there are areas where you can see like, this happening um yeah and i don't know that doesn't look great but yeah they're doing some damage and i've got some a little bit of disease on these plants and the squash bugs do transmit diseases to your plants but overall i think that they're going to be fine and i'm going to get a really good harvest out of these but i'm going to do what i can to get rid of the squash bugs. Um, this is a couple of pumpkin plants. Um, they're, it's like a Halloween mix. There's some white ones and some orange ones. Oh no. That was a really cute little pumpkin and it's now rotted and I think that possibly the squash bugs might be responsible for this. So I'm going to go ahead and get some pruners in a minute and just clip this off. Um, I don't know what happened, but it started to develop a couple of brown spots, and now it's rotting, so could be the squash bugs, could be the squash vine borers that are obviously inside this gross-looking swollen vine. Uh, yeah, they suck. Squash, squash vine borers are the devil, and you know what? One of these years, I'm going to figure out the secret to <laughs> uh, getting rid of these guys. So I'm learning that with gardening, I think probably one of the most important things is to just keep trying. Just, there's just so, there are so many unique challenges that pop up, you know, every year there are new challenges and new things to figure out. Um, and you just keep trying and you get you know, you get opportunities to, to keep trying. There's always another spring, there's always another fall. Um, yeah, so it's just, you know, learning things and getting better and better year after year. So now I'll show you guys the flower and herb garden and pumpkin patch. They're always in here trampling my vines. Um, as you can see, this, uh, these pumpkin plants are getting powdery mildew. I could have sprayed neem oil that would have helped with that, but honestly it's so wet, they're just going to get powdery mildew. Um, but I've harvested two pumpkins from this plant. There was a huge one that was hanging just inside the fence right over there. Um, it's on my front porch now. And there's another pumpkin here. 
starting to turn orange. So that's really cool. Um, still blooming like crazy. And yeah, the flower and herb garden is a mess right now. All the echinacea have fallen over. They got so tall and all the rain just kind of knocked them knocked them over but I don't mind it's just really pretty um, just all these flowers just spilling over here um, my rose bush did great it bloomed twice and you can see a lot of new growth there look at all that lemon balm I've still got a harvest or um, it's time to harvest lemon balm again <laughs> This Coreopsis is getting really big. Hopefully it's gonna bloom at some point. My Strawberry Blonde Calendula have bloomed. This one looked really pretty. It's looking really ragged now. So I could go ahead and take that head off. Um, but it's blooming and it's, it's just really pretty. And I didn't realize how good Calendula smelled. Um, the leaves have a really lovely citrusy uh, scent. I've got some oregano growing down here, more calendula, more coreopsis and oregano. Basil the garden gnome. This alyssum is really pretty. I've never grown it before but I saw Jess at Roots and Refuge Farm talking about it and I love it. I think it's, it's a really good filler, border flower. Um, this fever few should be blooming soon, which is exciting as well. My thyme is doing amazing, and it's blooming also. This area is a wash. I filled it full of wildflower seeds, and nothing grew. The turmeric is doing great. Yeah, I have five turmeric plants I'm really excited about. Um, these, this California poppy hasn't bloomed yet. Check out that sunflower. These, um, these red sunflowers have been really cool. They've been, you know, this is as tall as they get, which is three or four feet tall. And they've just made multiple heads per plant multiple like a lot of heads per plant and there have been a lot of really beautiful colors and the zinnias the zinnias are getting bigger and blooming a lot of them are getting eaten but I have picked quite a few and made a few bouquets look at this mess this is a pumpkin plant that a pumpkin plant is planted there that grows I, I, I trained it to grow all along the back and I trained it to grow all along the front Ooh, there's a pumpkin it's a cute guy but you see all of this tomato this is all one tomato plant um, it was a volunteer and it, it, the base of it's right under there I decided not to prune it and just let it go crazy and show you what a tomato plant will do when left to its own devices. Um, let's see. Yeah, it's just crazy. There is a lot of fruit on it and there's some red fruit you can see down there. It's already some fruit. If I could only get back there and harvest it, that would be great. I could, I'd just have to get a little dirty in the process. Um, these sunflowers didn't get very tall, but that's okay. They're sending off side flowers, lovely. There's another ver uh, red sunflower that's really pretty. Um, yeah, the rosemary's happy. Ooh, cool spider in the rosemary. Can you see the spider? Cool. Um, here's something that just volunteered. Looks like another pumpkin plant. So that's fun. 
Um, I might leave that one and have Halloween pumpkins. That's all I have to show you today. Thank you so much. That's all for today, guys. Thank you so much for following along on this gardening journey with me. Um, I really enjoy sharing all the beauty of the garden with you and sharing all the things that I'm learning along the way. Um, and it's, it's just really important to me to share um, how amazing gardening is, how necessary, how healing and beautiful. I'm really excited about sharing my love for gardening with you guys and I hope that I hope you grow a garden. Um, if you're not growing one right now, I hope that you're daydreaming about the garden that you will grow in the future. Um, but thank you so much again for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe if you would like to see more garden tours and tutorials. Um, thank you and happy growing.